nothing else you wanted to say about Oh, God, so much I want to leap on, and actually, before I let other people leap on, going back to the women's reading group stuff, mm -hmm. we keep hearing that keeps coming up. Um, and often what's in that kind of realm isn't as pulpy as you might originally yeah, think. Yeah, no. Yeah, so can you talk a little bit about how that's grown up? Yeah. And, and what fits there? And actually, yeah, I don't... Um, it's lucky you said that, because I don't really want to give the impression that I want lots of, like, chick lit, the kind of yeah. early, early 2000 really, it? No, it's not yeah. that at all. And it's a lot more, um, it's a lot more upmarket and crossover. So a lot of what the women's reading group stuff now kind of goes into thriller and goes into, often we're talking about these kind of just female stories <clears throat> with female protagonists as a, at the moment, the real boom thing that, psychological suspense, this kind of, and some publishers calling it female noir, and you just have these, it's kind of women, almost always female protagonists in domestic settings, but where their something is put into their life that kind of throws it off course, and it could be, you know, there are some examples where it's that <clears throat> the woman's found out her husband's cheating and then murdered the, the other woman at one end, or maybe there's a a woman's disappeared and the female protagonist goes off around the world to find them. Something like that. So it's like taking a woman <clears throat> outside of her comfort zone, the domestic setting that she's she's in, and yeah, just kind of taking her to unusual places. That's the sort of thing that and actually Richard and Julie is a really good example <clears throat> is a really good gauge of of what's working in reading good fiction. And you'll see that it's really wide, really broad, the things that they have. So um, they do have they have some historical novels on there, um, and I think what we're what we're kind of talking about is just upmarket commercial fiction, and it can it can span a number of genres, um, but more often than not, it's got these kind of strong female protagonists. Yeah, well, I think because I used to feel a lot of shame um, reading anything that had that which on it. Yeah. Um, but as a working parent, it's great for bedtime because it's 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 not chick lit and it's not it's not literary, it's not difficult and it's just perfect for yeah. bedtime. You can slightly fool yourself that you're not completely pulp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And TV book club, similar sort of thing. They've done some quite some quite literary yeah. stuff though. So they did uh, the Jennifer Egan Is it from the Goon Squad? Whenever that was published, and that is really quite literary, <coughs> um, but accessible as well it's, it's it's um yeah and i actually think it's really exciting the development of that sort of thing because it's got people reading things that's out that are i think it's probably raised the bar for things that it's not it's not that sort of really really pulpy commercial stuff anymore that people are reading it is kind of a lot higher concept than that that's another thing actually to say about what i'm looking for and what everyone i think is looking for is there's a big at the moment, you get kind of these two types of, you either have things that's just brilliant, the writing's brilliant, <clears throat> or you've got this and this reading group upmarket commercial thing. Then at the other end, kind of the airport thriller end of the market, it's very much now about high concepts, and <clears throat> we've seen lots and lots of really big deals lately for things, but just with a hook. So it's kind of, I think it's a lot more filmic, you know, where, where there's a, a brilliant two-line pitch, and then all of a sudden everyone's sitting up and paying attention. It doesn't, um, as long as the writing sort of can carry it, then then that seems to be enough. So I'm, I'm talking about things like, there was, a, there was an enormous deal for a book about a time-traveling serial killer, which is going to be, <clears throat> I think it's been published this summer. Um, or, you know, another one where with a, with a murderer who's playing games, kind of <clears throat> a game of eeny meeny with his victims where one lives and the other dies. It's just these kind of really simple, they seem quite simple, but obviously they're complex to work through and to make them work is quite difficult. But publishers, you know, you, you almost feel like at the moment you can sell that to a publisher on 20 pages. <coughs> and there have even been examples where people are doing huge deals for 20 pages of a novel, which, I mean, that just never used to happen. Um, in non-fiction, you sell it much more. You, you often sell a proposal, but that never used to happen in fiction. And now, it is quite common for those, those big high-concept 
things that sort of maybe a bit more commercial in the market. I guess then they have the same effect on the um, the uh, key account you know, Smiths and big buyers, and, and if it doesn't come yeah. through the right, and they'll just put something into it. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, and that is actually happening a bit. We have a client who is working for Penguin, and Penguin are generating their own ideas, novels, and giving him kind of a detailed synopsis, and then he's he's writing them. And they've you know they've sold the film and they've sold the film at the same time. And, wow. How's that deal structured? Do you know? It's it's more more or less a ghostwriter deal. Fifty fifty. Uh, well, it can't. No, nothing back end. Just not front fee. Um, yeah, but I think it's actually a horrible job to write it because it's really frustrating. It's like Mills and Boone. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah.